my, my bias uh, as someone who's, who's based in China is that the, the security apparatus that Xi Jinping and friends have created is overwhelming, powerful that these protests we're seeing uh, very early stages uh, in the past week only, um, that, that the chances that these, that these protests could escalate into something significant stri strike me as small. Uh, it seems to me that the surveillance state, the control state has, 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 has such enormous tools at their disposal that everyone who's demonstrated could be they're, they could be visited by security people or others within the next week and they could all be shut down. So, I mean, I know you're a journalist and don't want to speculate too much, but do you have any views about, uh, is, the, is the Chinese surveillance in the state, is it powerful enough to resist all that we've seen in the headlines in recent days? Uh, I would say yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, at the, I, I mean, we're already seeing uh, uh, people being approached by police for protesting in a way that people are surprised that the police knew they were there. Uh, you know, and and often out of the blue, you know, somebody who went by the protest in Shanghai will get a call two days later. Uh, from the police, you know, lecturing them about going to the protest. And if they deny they went, they'll say, fine, but don't go again. Um, and I think, because you know, they have over it on the, the phones, they know that they were there. They, they so the, the for, yeah. So, yeah. So our assumption in that case, it was a phone tracker. Um, and, you know, you get other, other, other versions of this with facial recognition. Uh, and, and you get this with uh, uh, photos that are taken as well that are, that go, that are public. Uh, you get this with an, a network of informants as well, because there is good old fashioned kind of, you know, just informant network stuff uh, for, for figuring things out. And it does feel like um, what's interesting is for a lot of people, this was the first time they've done something like this. Um, and so it does strike me as there's been a bit of maybe naivete. Uh, uh, people were kind of, you know, pulled by their emotions and by their their sort of you know, desperation and frustration out onto the streets. And I think many of them probably didn't fully think through, you know, the the, the various ways that the system is built uh, uh, to do to deal with exactly this moment. And, um, you know, and didn't that's, take that's the right. precautions. The system was built to prevent moments like this from escalating. Right. And, and again, like as Mui said, if you sit, if you, you know that it sits in the background and most of the time, you know, you're a good citizen who believes what the government's saying, you, you think, okay, well, this is about crime. And, you know, the, the old cliche that people repeat, if I haven't done anything wrong, I have nothing to fear. You know, if you're looking at it that way and you're like, oh, well, there's a lot less uh, theft on the streets now because of the system and, and it's great. Uh, you don't really think that it's going to be turned on you necessarily, um, or you haven't really spent the time to study it. You know, the phone tracker thing before we set out to understand it, was just not common knowledge for anybody that China had literally covered the entire country in phone trackers, um, you know, and it's a it's it's a use of the technology that just we've never seen at a scale like this for mass surveillance. Um, and 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 people just simply weren't aware because there was nobody doing work on it. And there was no interest in really understanding that. So I think there's a lot of people who just don't get it. And so then all of a sudden, when the when this police state comes back at, at, at all these people, you know, it looks like magic to them, but also, uh, yeah, it's incredibly effective because people haven't learned the countermeasures. You know, in Hong Kong, uh, there was not nearly uh, as complicated and sophisticated a surveillance system, um, and yet people there were taking, you know, much more extreme countermeasures. Um, and so one thing about this, to me, the way I view this, and I, I could be totally wrong, but is this is, um, you know, a new development and potentially a first step in a, in a change in the way people express dissatisfaction. And you'll probably see people develop a more of an understanding of how to get around the surveillance system uh, as we go. It's interesting because they're so good at getting around the censorship system, right? I mean, what we've seen with the censorship system is people are incredibly clever at getting around, uh, uh, you know, the way that it will uh, look for you know various texts that you write right and so people are just writing one character repeating like how 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 like good 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 uh as 
you know, as a way to get around the censorship system, they deal with the censorship system every day. And so they know how to get around it. The surveillance system, most people have never, it, it touches very few people. Most people have never dealt with it in their entire lives unless they leave a wallet on the subway. And all of a sudden for the first time they're having to. So this is a really kind of interesting moment because the business side of the police state is all of a sudden affecting a lot of people. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, in, in, in the short term, it's going to deal very capably with people who go out to the streets. And if we see more of this, I think we'll see it used even more muscularly than we have than it has been already used. Well, you, you, I mean, as a Chinese national, maybe it's too sensitive for you to talk about. But but what do you think? Can, can uh, you come? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's not, um, you know, the. I mean, you has also like, you know, like uh, one thing a green card. Like, you you're yeah, in between yeah. the two civilizations here. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with everything Po just said. I, I agree that um, you know that um, a lot of the protesters um, they are pretty new to this and they might not have the uh, comprehensive understanding of how the system works. And uh, you know, so that that means like they um, they probably didn't really uh, protect themselves well enough uh, before you know getting questioned. Uh, later, yeah. So, so I, I've some, you know, they might be approached later, and they don't know how to deal with that. Yeah, I, I think I hold similar views as Paul. Yeah. So one question has come in. A couple of questions. One is, um, to what extent is the at the provincial level and city level, are they coordinated with the central government, the Ministry of Public Security, presumably is the lead police agency in China. So it seems from your reporting that that it varies from place to place. In one place, it may be that they have phone sniffers. In another place, they may be doing DNA testing. It may be that th there's no one cohesive national system in place, right? Mm, no, I would say, yeah, every place adoption of the level of the technology is different. And you know the amount of data they collect is different. The types of data, I mean, there are like, I, I think everyone, pretty much everyone is collecting facial recognition, like fa pictures of faces. But, you know, for example, like, is everyone collecting uh, voice prints? Is everyone probably know from what we can see? Um, but not, you know, like uh, what I'm talking about, like a mass collection, like uh, collecting people on the streets, like the one that we mentioned in the, um, but, they, but they are a lot of times they are collecting people. If they got you to the police station for questioning, they would collect a much more uh, comprehensive uh, profile of uh, biometric data. Yeah, and uh, what we do see is that, uh, you know, even the national police, uh, they acknowledge that the data inter integration is very different and different regions in China have different uh, analytical capabilities. So that is something they're actually aware and they are trying to fix. Yeah, they call so the it. Like, they're the... going to have, Paul, please. Oh, to just that they, you know, they call them, you know, these sort of data islands and, and the idea that you have, you know, kind of pockets of data that aren't shared widely. And, you know, some of the documents we found are these national level um, uh, public security bureau documents that talk about trying to basically gather all this data up from province to province and town to town and to have it in a single place. The problem is there's so much data that often it's stored at a local level. And what they're trying to do is basically build software that sits above it and can grab what they need uh, at any given time. Um, but but there is a fair a fairly high level of the coordination is getting much better. And there are systems that they went out to buy, you know, in 2020, 2021, uh, that are that are aimed at exactly that problem of consolidating all this data. Um, and so, uh, you know, th there is a there are systems now that Beijing has, uh, you know, if for somebody sitting in Beijing at a kind of national level in the Public Security Bureau, if they want to grab certain data, they can. I will say centralization, while scary, uh, because we get this kind of Hollywood idea of people sitting in an office kind of, you know, wandering around China on cameras following different people. Uh, it, it's often not in practice the way these things are used. They're much more effective at a local level because you need manpower to follow up on the surveillance. You know, if you have camera feeds of 1.4 billion people, you know, yes, if you want one specific person, you can try to find them. But but if you you know at a, at a kind of 
from an, uh, the calculus of an authoritarian or a police state, uh, you're much better managing people with a large force at a local level. So if you know, you know, Mr. Zhang is often going to try to uh, get to Beijing to protest your government, you put a camera near Mr. Zhang's house and you write an algorithm to tell you when Mr. Zhang get, goes to the train station after, you know, 6 p.m. because he may be heading to Beijing. Uh, and then you send a police to grab him and, send, get, and, and get him back. And that's not you know, quite a sort of Hollywood in a way, but that's much more kind of on the day to day level, how uh, the data and these systems can be used to impose the will of the state on a person. And oftentimes it comes down to very petty, very local power abuse in, in, in those ways. Mm.